Yes, we have. I think it's clear, and I want to, since the, 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 the motion was filed under seal, but I think it's clear we set it in the courtroom. Uh, in view of the latest delay, in view of five subsequent hearings, in view of 60 days from trial, Mr. McGregor is innocent. He's innocent. And the only thing he asked for is a speedy and fair trial. Now, how is he going to get a fair trial if the other side don't follow the law? And that's what's happened. Uh, yes, in our motion, we ask that the case be dismissed. We ask that the witnesses be stricken from the record. We ask that the wiretaps be suppressed. And we ask that sanctions be placed against this so-called elite group of prosecutors from Washington, D.C. What, what type of sanctions? We left that up to the court. You know, they've tried to self-impose their own sanctions, although they didn't say to the court, it appears that lead counsel Peter Ainsworth has been removed and they brought in the deputy chief. Uh, uh, you know, that's unbelievable. They come in here, they bring charges against local people, they bring in their hot shot from D.C., and now they removed him from the case. I mean, what does that say? I think that says that he didn't play by the rules and he shouldn't have done what he did. Did y'all hear what the judge said? And I hope that some of you will report it. They should have been ready. He said, the that this is the judge. The government, arrogance, ignorance, willful disobeying of a court order. The government doesn't understand its legal obligations. Blatant ignorance of the law, clearly frustrating the court and the defendants. Totally agree with the defendants on, on various issues. Refer to this elite group from DC, surely they understand the law. Ridiculous is what he said. Something the department should not be proud of. And you heard what he said. He told them, this elite group from Washington, to go back and read the law. Read the law and make sure that they understand the law and then certify to him in court that they understand the law. That's something I'd get Lulu, three and a half years old, to do to, to her kindergarten teacher. So you go fill out this form and make sure you understand. Can you, do y'all understand how unbelievable this is? One of, the, one of the elite prosecutors in D.C. has been voluntarily removed from the case by the Justice Department. The court has told them to go understand the law, come back, and not only to understand it, you've got to certify it to me that you understand it. I mean, think what Mr. McGregor, we got informants, we got people taping private telephone calls, every kind of record of his life been done. These people are, you know, that's why people don't like the federal government. They're bullies. They're bullies. And that's what they've tried to do in this case. They've tried to bully us. And I think they found out some just pure old simple country type lawyers from Alabama are not going to be bullied. Joe, Mr. Fagan was talking in there. He said that the, this is a technological issue, that they had trouble dealing with Microsoft Word, WordPerfect, and other different word processing mechanisms. Do you buy that? Or do you no, no, no. Did you hear him refer? He referred to one of the lawyers on our team and said, this lawyer is more technically advanced than, than the entire Department of Justice. We don't understand the internet. That's what he said. But you know what he said? What they, he, they avoid? That on the 18th, they stood up in court and represented to the court they'd never done a review. That's what he said. On, on March 18th, the lead counsel from Washington, D.C. stood up to the court and said, we, we didn't know we had this judgment. Man, we, we've got it in place now, and we're, and we're going to get it done. You know what's interesting? They threw Fager up there as a sacrifice. I mean, Fager's not involved in the case until the 2030 shows up. He hadn't been at half the hearings in the case. The D.C. crowd knows they're in trouble. They're concerned. They throw the local boy up. Local boy can't bail him out. You heard what the judge said. Ain't going to get it. This dog and pony show is not going to get it. Joe, some of the information of under seal information came out regarding a possible uh, contract murder. Scheme. Nothing to it. That, you know, that came out at the very first hearing way back. Do you remember when I questioned the guy, what are you talking about? Any case been brought? No. That is a camouflage. What Fager's role today was, get up there now. We can't accept blame. We cannot accept blame, which they should have done. And what we want to do, let's try to play to the media and throw out some media balls and get away from what we got. Because we can't address it. We can't explain it. But I tell you what, and the court saw right through that. It didn't lie at all and hit them right in the nose. Right in the nose is where they should have been. Have I answered everybody's question? Where did you get these later? Where did the court get these?
30. I don't know. You heard me trying to find out. I, I did everything. I, it's clearly they got them after the 24th. On, on March the 22nd, I think y'all were in court, or some of you were, the judge said, you go right now and check every database, either 18th or 22nd, one or the other, every database, and you get it to them today. Well, obviously they didn't, uh, because we got these documents by order of the court 29 yesterday. We got them the 30th. Joe, would you be outraged by Monday if they say this case isn't dismissed? No, I, well, I'm going to be outraged if the government don't dismiss the case because they ought to because of what they've done. They ought to be ashamed. I mean, they ought to be ashamed. And they should have stood up in that courtroom and they should have said, we are ashamed of the conduct that we've done. And we're going to remedy this conduct rather than go in there and try to blame everybody but themselves. Why didn't they stand up and say we removed that? they even ashamed to, to tell you they removed Ainsworth. Why don't y'all ask them, where's Peter Ainsworth now? Is he in Alaska somewhere? Or maybe the Netherlands somewhere? I mean, this is ridiculous. I've never seen anything like that. Y'all have a great day. Thank y'all. I'm going to have a good weekend.